Walt Disney's Disneyland. When you wish upon a star, makes no difference who you are. Each week as you enter this timeless land, one of these many worlds will open to you. Frontierland. Tall tales and true from the legendary past. Tomorrowland. Promise of things to come. Adventureland. The wonder world of nature's own realm. Fantasyland. The happiest kingdom of them all. From the wonderful world of make-believe, we bring you the story of the Great Cat Family. And now, your host, Walt Disney. In creating new characters for our cartoon films, one of our main sources of inspiration has been the world of animals. And we've always been very much impressed with the cat family. This group of carnivora includes more than 40 species from almost every part of the world, some of which are the most handsome and yet the most savage of all animals. In telling our story, we have selected two of the more prominent members of this family, the lion and the domestic cat. The famous African lion, royal head of the cat family, hardly needs an introduction, for as everyone knows, he claims the title of king of beasts and has been the symbol of power and nobility down through the ages. As for the domestic cat, he has the distinction of being the smallest and most common member of the family, and yet the most important of all, at least as far as man is concerned, for he is the only cat who can truly be called a friend of man, and he has had a far greater effect upon civilization than any other member of the cat family as we shall see in exploring his long and eventful history. To tell the story of the domestic cat from its beginnings, we must go back in time 4,000 years to ancient Egypt. The history of the cat's first association with man can still be found in the monuments of those early times. From hieroglyphics, the Egyptian form of writing with pictures and symbols, we learn that the Egyptians developed great skill in taming wild animals. The dog, the hawk, the ibis, the crocodile, and the cat. It is believed that the cat was originally the wild African Kaffir cat. Cut, 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 cut. Cut, cut, cut. Cut, 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 cut. Cut, 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 cut. Through infinite patience, the Egyptian won the confidence of the wild, unpredictable creature. Cut, cut. question as to whether man adopted the cat or the cat adopted man. While the Egyptian utilized the cat to destroy the mice which threatened his food supply, the cat in turn utilized the Egyptian and his house for his own comfort and convenience, but always remaining aloof and mysterious and completely independent. It must have been these qualities which impressed the Egyptians, for they looked upon the cat as a superior creature. He became a symbol of greatness. To them, the sun rose and set in his eyes, and he was worshipped as a god. But even sacred cats can't live forever. And when a cat died, he was given a funeral as elaborate as a pharaoh's.
Like the pharaohs, his image was carved upon his tomb. He was mummified, and bowls of milk and mummified mice were buried with him to sustain him on his long journey through eternity. Thus, pampered as they were, the cat population increased till finally the cats outnumbered the Egyptians. But even in such great numbers, they remained just as precious and just as sacred as ever. And it was considered a major crime to smuggle a cat beyond the borders of Egypt. In those ancient times, just as they are today, laws were occasionally broken. At the risk of death, cats were smuggled through Egyptian customs. These daring catnappers were the Phoenician merchants who sailed their great cargo ships up and down the Mediterranean, selling and trading goats, glassware, clothing, ivory, spices, animal skins, wine, cattle, art treasures, pottery, and the very latest thing in novelties, a combination pet and mouse trap. In the new countries, the cat was no longer sacred. He was merely a cat. He might live in a palace and be the favorite of the king, or he might find his place in a humble peasant's cottage. But whatever the case, he accepted his fate and went on about his business of catching mice, finding comfort, and producing more cats. In many countries, the Egyptian cat interbred with native wild cats, creating new variations in the breed. They, in turn, created still more variations. As the centuries passed, the cat began to migrate to other parts of the world, going the way of commerce either as a passenger or stowaway. Thus, the cat was well on his way to becoming one of the most common and most important of man's domestic animals. One of the significant chapters of the domestic cat's history began during the Middle Ages. By this time, he was a common household pet in all the great cities of Europe. A cat sunning himself on the window ledge was just as familiar a sight as a flower pot. But the cat was never a free boarder. He paid well for his keep in terms of service to mankind. His contribution was so great that it actually changed the course of human history. Through the centuries, man's very existence has been continually threatened by a treacherous and deadly enemy, the rat. These destructive and vicious rodents swarmed the cities, devouring vast food supplies and spreading the Black Death, the dread bubonic plague. A disease so deadly that at one time a single epidemic wiped out one quarter of the population of Europe. Thus, the rat has killed more people than all the wars in history. Man's greatest single weapon against this army of death and destruction was the cat. For he was naturally equipped for hunting in the dark underworld of the rat. On velvet paws, he moves in silence. His sensitive whiskers act as antenna to feel his way through the darkness. The pupils of his eyes expand to take in every particle of light. With lightning fast reflexes, he strikes swiftly. If 
the many millions of rats destroyed by cats had been left to multiply, they could have wiped out the population of entire cities and completely overrun civilization. But the cat was not always rewarded for his great service to mankind. There was a black chapter in history when cats were condemned and persecuted. A dark age when the world was haunted by strange fears and superstitions. It was believed that evil spirits traveled the earth in human form. And thousands of innocent people were hanged or burned at the stake for witchcraft or sorcery. They were condemned by the words of the ignorant and the superstitious. Idle gossip growing into wild rumors spreading through towns and villages, twisting and turning into fantastic and monstrous tales. It was commonly believed that storms were caused by people who possessed supernatural powers. And anyone who dared travel by night could be accused of black magic and blamed for any sickness or death in the community. For night was the time of evil spirits. Since the cat was by nature a creature of the night, he too aroused suspicion. Many believed that his silent and mysterious ways were the ways of evil spirits, and that his steady, soul-piercing gaze must be the look of the devil. creeping over me and all at once he turned into a terrible demon and he came flying at me screaming like the voice of doom he's not a cat he's a devil through no fault of his own the cat which had once been worshipped as a god was condemned as a devil and blamed for the evils of the world Hundreds of witch hunters set out to destroy these witches and demons wearing the form of a cat. There's one up in the tree! Get him! Hey, there he goes! During the reign of terror, hundreds of thousands of cats perished. And for a time, the domestic cat was threatened with extinction. But fortunately, some survived to carry on the species, to resume their place in human society. And now we come to another phase of the domestic cat's history his long and illustrious career in the world of literature. From Aesop down through the ages, the cat has been a traditional storybook character, and he can be found in almost every collection of fairy tales or nursery rhymes. His popularity in stories of all nations is probably due to the many variations within his personality which enable him to play a great variety of roles. In the famous old English classic, Alice in Wonderland, we find two distinctly different types of cats. First, there is Alice's pet, Dinah, a typical kitten full of mischief and curiosity, the picture of innocence. That's it, Dinah. If I had a world of my own, everything would be nonsense. Nothing would be what it is, because everything would be what it isn't. And contrarywise, what it is, it wouldn't be. And what it wouldn't be, it would. You see? Ow! In my world, you wouldn't say, meow. You'd say, yes, Miss Alice. Oh, oh but you would. You'd be just like people, Dinah. And all the other animals, too. Oh, Dinah. 
a rabbit with a waistcoat and a walk. Oh, my dear, I think it's a man, a man, a man. Yes, curious. What could a rabbit possibly be late for? Please, sir. I'm late. I'm late. So you may important me. No time to say hello. Goodbye. I'm late. I'm late. I'm late. It must be awfully important, like a party or something. Mr. Rabbit, wait. No, 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 no. I'm overdue. I'm really in a stew. No time to say goodbye. Hello. I'm late. I'm late. I'm late. My. What a peculiar place to have a party. No. You know, Dinah, we really shouldn't <coughs> be doing this. After all, we haven't been invited, and curiosity often leads to trouble. Oh, 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 oh. As Alice journeys into the strange dream world of Wonderland, she meets the Cheshire Cat, who represents all the mysterious and sinister aspects of the species, with an added touch of insanity. Was brilliant, and the slidey toes that did the guy and the gim bell in the way. Why, why you're a cat, a Cheshire cat, all a mimsy, oh what a board of gold. Oh wait, don't go, please. Very well, very cool. Oh no no no, thank you, but but I just wanted to ask you which way I ought to go. Well. That depends on where you want to get to. Oh, it really doesn't matter. As long as I can... Then it really doesn't matter which way you go. <laughs> oh, by the way, if you'd really like to know, he went... That way. Who did? The white rabbit. He did? He did what? Uh, went that way. Who did? The white rabbit. What rabbit? But didn't you just say, I mean, oh dear. Can you stand on your head? <coughs> However, if I were looking for a white rabbit, I'd ask the mad hatter. Mad hatter? No, no, I, I, I don't... Or, there's the March Hare in that direction. Uh, thank you. I, I think I shall visit him. Of course, he's mad, too. But I don't want to go among mad people. Oh, you can't help that. Most everyone's mad here. <laughs> you may have noticed that I'm not... All there, myself. <laughs> Walt Disney will return in just a moment. Late nights inside Walt Disney, you'll laugh. Isn't that the scrappy little car we had in the shop? You'll cry. Brad uh, ran away, Renee, over a week ago. You will wonder why would anybody ever wear that? Let's don't get personal. Uh, excuse me. Enjoy action, adventure, comedy, and romance. Oh, I kiss you. You sure this comes under the heading of science? Absolutely, yeah. When the classic Disney movie magic comes to life. I have the most wonderful thing to show you. Late nights inside Walt Disney. Come on, everybody. You gotta watch us now. Wanna see action? Tomorrow.
tomorrow morning, inside Walt Disney, the Ink and Paint Club presents Timeless Stories, Unforgettable Scenes, Classic Characters, all brought to life through the magic of Disney animation. Spread out, little folks. This is Cinema Skills. <laughs> That's better. See the classic cartoons that made the Disney name. Stick to myself. <laughs> On the Ink and Paint Club. <laughs> Tomorrow morning at 5, 4 Central, inside Walt Disney. Thursday on Magical World of Disney. It's not a kids and creatures. That's what you want, isn't it? You bet. At Disney, we've got creatures robotic, reanimated, and yuck, repulsive. Gross. But don't worry. Tonight, you're in charge of the creatures. So show them you're not afraid. <laughs> and tell this mechanical creature not to shine that bright light in your eyes. Well, excuse me. But careful. If you don't watch our Disney kids and creatures in under wraps, followed by Fly the Navigator, they may be watching you. Thursday on Magical World of Disney. Movies at 7, 6 Central. We now return to Walt Disney. In the original fairy tale classic of Cinderella, there was no member of the cat family. But as we developed our story for the screen, we added a group of little mice characters to be friends of Cinderella. And two of these mice, Jock and... The story of Pinocchio was another fairy tale without a cat. And here again, we added our own cat character in the cartoon version of this old classic. Walt Disney will return in just a moment. Now to pay our respects to the other members of the cat family, the wild jungle beasts of Africa, India, and the Orient. There's little question that his royal highness, the lion, is the most regal-looking of all animals. And yet his title, King of Beasts, has often been challenged. Many believe the tiger is superior, a more formidable and savage killer. Unlike various other carnivorous animals, the lion has never been a cruel and wanton destroyer of life. He only kills out of necessity. And when his appetite is satisfied, he lives in quiet dignity with a very gentle attitude toward his family, a proud and patient father to his cubs. This gentle side of the lion's nature is often cultivated in captivity. When properly raised, a lion cub can grow up to be almost as friendly as an oversized kitten. As an outstanding example of this, there was once a cub raised in the same pen with a lamb. They romped and played together like two children. And when they grew up, they became inseparable companions. It was this unique friendship which suggested the story we called Lambert the... Yeah.